In this video, I'd like to share with you a little bit about my life story in three stages. And by sharing my story, my intention is to inspire some new ideas, some new perspectives for maybe for you to see your story and your life experience in a new way. One of the gifts that I continue to lean on in my life is the gift of storytelling. Storytelling is the most impactful way we learn because when we hear each other's stories, we can see that we are quite similar, that we all have uh, certain trials and challenges, certain dreams and visions, certain longings and desires. So by sharing a story, I hope to ignite a new sense of um, humanity, a shared humanity between you and I. So it doesn't matter if we are from different countries, from different family backgrounds, maybe we have different color skin, different gender, different marital status, kids, no kids. We all come back to the same as we are human beings who desire to learn, to grow, to know that what we do in the world matters and that our voice, our expression matters, that we truly have unique uh, gifts and abilities that we can share with the world and add our contribution to the world. This is my intention behind sharing my story. My name is Katarina Satori. And if I look back, I could see there were three distinct stages in my life. The stage number one was all about um, coming to my own power. And this is a stage that um, since I am in Peru right now, they have a beautiful Indian cosmology um, where they, they utilize the image of the sacred power animals and birds to symbolize the stage of life. So they have three sacred animals, puma, serpent or snake, and condor. Condor is a powerful visionary bird. So the first stage of Puma, so when you think about Puma, what comes to mind? Skilled hunter, strength, precision, right? Beauty, the grace, power. So the first stage of my life was actually unlocking a Puma within me. I was born in Soviet Russia when Russia was still under communism. The first uh, 10 years of my life was spent in a communist country. I was born in a very simple family. I was raised by a single mother who worked very difficult jobs, tough labor. So I saw my mom constantly working, right? During the day, she worked in a factory, in a big meat factory. Uh, I had an aversion to meat ever since I was a child, maybe because my mom tried to uh, force meat eating on me. <laughs> and even with that decision, even with that kind of parenting approach, uh, it is clear that in that time there were no parent, uh, parent courses, how to be a better parent. There were no books that forcing your child to eat something that a child doesn't want is really can create trauma, right? None of that was available. So my childhood uh, had some beautiful moments, had some moments of playfulness and adventure and curiosity. It's not always been very, very dark, but often, you know, I don't shy away from uh, objectively talking about my childhood which a lot of it was intense and difficult and turbulent. So when I talk about the first chapter of my life, the first 30 years was all about unlocking the puma within me, unlocking my own authentic power. It's because I felt 
I was disconnected from my power. I came into uh, the family lineage that had abuse, that had alco- that substance abuse, especially alcohol, drinking binges, and all the drama and chaos that comes when people drink heavily and they lose their awareness. I grew up as a little girl, sometimes being a witness to fights, physical fights between my mom and um, one of the men that she lived with. I grew up with five different stepdads, which as you imagine, is not easy to go through. Um, So not, uh, not going into understanding and justifying my mother's choices. You know, my mom was young when she gave birth to me. She was only 22. And from this perspective, I have deep sense of empathy. What would it look like to have zero access to support, zero access to mentors, zero access to books, resources, and find yourself at the age of 22 needing to provide not only for yourself, but my two kids, my older sister who was two years old, and myself. Only compassion, only empathy. And I have done a lot of healing between my mother and I. I can do a whole other video on that. But it was everything I share. I want to convey objectivity. I want to convey that, you know, like in any childhood, uh, there will be beautiful, bright moments. And what I've learned and what I've discovered about myself, the more I would focus on healing the wounds and the traumas that have been the result of my childhood, the more I could access positive memories and the beauty of my childhood. You see, when we go through traumatic experiences, our brain is wired in a way that we remember the trauma 10 times stronger, that we remember the beautiful moment. So it's it's just a survival mechanism, right? Or oh, five times, you know, don't quote me on the precise numbers. I am using this as an example to demonstrate that our survival brain is wired to remember the pain in order to avoid the pain in the future. So when I didn't know how to heal myself, I didn't know how to heal my soul, I felt the pain of unprocessed pain and I felt the coldness between my mother and I. But the more I would dive into the healing, the more I would dive into understanding in taking responsibility for how I choose to live right now. You know, um, I often meet people with difficult pasts and coming from a difficult past myself, I like to remind them that the strength of their soul often mirrors the difficulty of their past. And if they remember that every now moment they write the future, then then they can understand what has happened to them from a perspective of self-honoring, self-compassion and take the time for forgiveness. Forgiveness takes time. Forgiveness comes from understanding. The more you understand the the perfect design from the level of the soul, that nothing is random in your life, the more you can have empathy and compassion. So this was my, um, my first stage, first 30 years, you know, seeing my mother working such hard, hard labor jobs and really not having any time or energy or awareness to to develop a relationship with me. I was always a sensitive child. I was a child who could um, emotionally connect with people easily. And I was a child who had extraordinary perceptions. One time my mother went to a gypsy. You know, if you grew up in Russia, Russians didn't have psychics or spiritual guides, but they had gypsies because, you know, we had 80 years of communism that suppressed a spiritual pulse of Russia. So all the spiritual guides went underground. So you had to know a gypsy, you had to know a psyche. I remember my mom went to a gypsy 
to do a reading for my older sister and for me. And for my older sister, she came back with so much calmness that my older sister will spend her life living close to, to her mother and having, you know, pretty calm and uh, grounding experience. When, but she looked at my chart, at my, you know, uh, prophetic site, right? And she would say, oh, you got to protect this child. This child has a very unique destiny, a very um, challenging destiny in a lot of ways. So protect this child. That's all that the gypsy said. So I did notice my mom paying a little bit more attention to me after that. But I was also a very self-sufficient child. You know, I was always into studying and reading and looking for opportunities to uh, see the world and to see different cultures. That was a huge desire for me as a little kid growing up in Russia. I wanted to see the world. I wanted to learn a different language. So when English, English came to me so naturally. I was studying English in school. Just how if you know if you're in the United States, how you would study Spanish. It's an invitation, right? So I was always really interested in foreign cultures, foreign languages, uh, people from different backgrounds. And um, so first 30 years was all about unlocking my power, not making this video too, too strong. But I came to US uh, guided by my vision, uh, taking big leaps of faith and acting on inspiration and that's a lot of it is what i teach a lot of it was that i shared my videos that if you have a dream you will be given an opportunity to actualize that dream yes hard, hard work will be required yes faith and risk taking will be required but you will be guided towards your dream and if you remember that if you have the dream you have within the dream everything to actualize it, right? Your true authentic dream, not the fantasy, not just like, uh, <laughs> you know, like a, for, you know, not a, a real dream. And how do we know the difference between a real dream and illusion? A real dream opens your heart. A real dream continues to move your heart and whisper the, all the possibilities and, and continue to ask you not to give up. Read the book Alchemist by Paolo Coelho. When the little boy, the shepherd boy, has this recurring dream about the treasure that was buried somewhere and it's for him to find that treasure. And when you read the book The Alchemist, this literally what describes my, my first 30 five years of my life. I am 40 right now. I just turned uh, 40 last year and I love this chapter. You know, I am not shy about telling, talking about my age because first of all, age is just a number, but there is certain level of wisdom that comes when you cross a decade. And my life has been really rich in experience and lots of risk taking, lots of falling on my face, lots of mistakes, lots of experiences that um, some people probably would never dive into, but I felt it was a part of my life. It was a part of my experience. It was a part of my evolution, part of my growth. So I wanted to share that with you. So read the book Alchemist by Paolo Coelho. And if you already read it, read it again. I have found when I read that book on the different levels of my consciousness, it opens up in a new way. So let's begin with, um, okay, awakening that puma within me. I came to US with um, putting everything on the line. I talk a lot about that story. I literally came to this country with $3 to my name and I had a job, I had a housekeeping job that would pay in two weeks. So ever since a very, very young age, the intelligence of life was putting me through trials. And I am grateful for that. You know, I wonder how different my life would be if my life was just a little bit more cushioned. And I'm not gonna pretend 
that I've never had those thoughts and uh, maybe even bitterness of why I did not have more support in the beginning of my life, right? And only now I understand the wisdom of it. The, the, the very, very simple beginnings of my journey were necessary components to ignite a power of my will and faith and ironclad discipline. You know, I, I see that as the beginning of unlocking our power. We got to find connection to our will, right? So many times people don't unlock their powers because their will is so weak. You know, they set an intention and they set a goal and then they give up in three days. And um, the one of the reason I, I love coming to places of power like India or, or Peru, you can really be inspired by how determined people are, by how hardworking they are, and how they have such a good attitude. They have simple conditions, but their attitude is so phenomenal, so positive. So that was the first stage, really, unlocking the power within me. The second stage was unlocking my inner world, unlocking the power of my spirituality, the power of my sexuality, the power of my sensuality. And this represents with a snake. I have a tattoo on my arm that says wisdom uh, with the serpent. In every wisdom tradition, serpent is a symbol of wisdom, of royal protection, of mysteries, of a higher knowing, of immortality. It's a very sacred symbol for me. And when I came to Peru, I found out that uh, a symbol, serpent, is a huge, huge um, symbol here. So that would be the second stage of my life, uh, probably age 28 until 38, I would say. That's uh, also 10 years where I dove into my way of rebellion, rebellion against uh, sexual taboos, against societal rules, against what was expected from me. And I was driven by freedom. I really wanted to find freedom, freedom in my own mind, in my own body, in my own life. So I found myself in the Burning Man. I found myself in a lot of underground communities and a lot of underground experiences where I felt that I could explore my shadow and explore my forbidden edges. And this is part of the healer training. You know, my destiny in the world and part of my path is as serving the planet as a healer, as a teacher, and it's as, as, a, as a shamanic path. And as a shamanic path, you must get to know your shadow. You must dance with your shadow. You must know your every fantasy, every suppressed desire. You got to explore. You got to dive into your inner world with a big flashlight. No matter what you're going to find, some skeletons, some, some uh, rotten emotion, some unprocessed pain, you got to go into that and you got to be with it. You got to feel it. You got to find it. You got to accept it. You got to alchemize it. That was the chapter always them. It's, it's unlocking your kundalini energy. This was 28 to 38, unlocking your kundalini energy. And how do we master our sexual energy? Well, first, we, we misuse it. We misunderstand the power of it. We give it away. We, um, or we can be run by our sexual energy, right? So I see this kind of a two tendencies. Either we give away um, our sexual power or we misuse it and we dominate others with our sexual power. And I'm speaking outside of gender. You know, women and men and non-binary beings who don't identify with any gender, we can play those shadows, and I found before we learn to master our sexual energy and awaken our kundalini and see the sacredness in our sexuality, a lot of times we either are dominated by our sexuality or 
dominate others by our sexuality. So this was a huge chapter for me, awakening that kundalini and that serpent energy and healing sexual traumas, healing sexual wounds, and really coming into balance of my inner feminine and my inner masculine to activate that mystical sacred union within. I know in this video I'm going pretty rapidly. I don't want to make it too long, um, but the next stage of life is awakening the condor, the, which is the visionary bird that flies really, really high, that between dimensions, that brings the vision for the planet, that is um, in service to the planetary mind. And this is a stage that I find myself now, where I, I serve as a voice, as one of the voices of so, so many voices for the planetary awakening, for the planetary rebirth. And I find this stage of life incredibly fulfilling, rewarding, harmonious. I've never been more happy. I've never been more whole. And this has been my, my recent message more and more. It's the message of wholeness. A message of finding our balance, finding our, our joy, finding our integration, right? And um, so this is, the, this is the stage where, you know, I find myself... Um, building the business that I love, building the community that I can really serve um, and continue to serve, really expressing my creativity. When you think about condor stage, it's all about creativity, right? First stage was awakening the puma, awakening the power. Second stage, awakening sexuality. Third stage, creating like an artist, being the visionary for the healing of the planet. That's where I am right now. And I work with other visionary leaders, and we often revisit their past. We often see their past from a new height. We take a look at um, the patterns and uh, the archetypes that are emerging now in the new way. And a lot of times we revisit the second stage. We look at um, our relationship with our sexuality in the new way redefining meanings, breaking free from old paradigms and old rules or labels. Because what I find to be more and more aligned for me right now and what I share with my clients and with my students and with my community is that awakening is a journey back to your most authentic, most transparent, most natural self where you look at your past with reverence. You look at everything you survived with gratitude. You look at all of um, difficult parts of your journey with, with gratitude as well. You begin to accept them. You begin to see the wisdom of your path. You begin to see that nothing was random on your path. You begin to notice uh, the joy, the beauty, the connection, that everything is connected on your journey. And then you begin to awaken your deeper voice, your deeper creative potential. You begin to find courage to share yourself in the more natural, more authentic way. You slowly but steadily share these old ways of proving yourself or or, you know, wanting to appear as important, right, or significant, you begin to realize that you are enough, truly, no matter how cliche this may feel or sound, you begin to realize that you are truly enough and your path is beautiful and your path is magnificent. So this is what I see, the three stages coming to the power, authentic power, coming to um, realizing the sacredness of sexuality. And then the third, unlocking your true vision, unlocking your true potential. This has been my path. This has been my journey. And I hope you could feel my soul through the share. And you're always, always welcomed in my virtual world. Check out my website, katarinasatori.com. Check, just Google me. Look up all of my social media channels or the one that appeals to you the most from Vimeo to uh, Facebook, to Instagram, to YouTube, to LinkedIn. 
I post a little bit of different content on each one, whichever platform appeals to you. And if you want to stay connected, just sign up for um, a free wisdom transmission that I send out to my email community. And I'm here to serve the world, to serve humanity, to serve you. And if this message resonate with you leave me a comment let me know what you are what was most inspiring for you do you see the stages of your journey and how would you call them i call them as these as these animals as these birds I'm curious to hear what would you call uh, your evolution your journey your beautiful path thank you for spending this time with me may you be blessed i am another version of you